Okay, we're here at the Santa Barbara, California airport, runway 25. We're going to do a little IFR takeoff and climb to the new, one of the near VORs, Gaviota. Let's brief the departure and I'll tell you what I'm going to do with the autopilot as well. First of all, <coughs> our clearance reads, maintain runway heading to intercept the Gaviota 127 radial inbound, Gaviota. Climb and maintain 2,000. Expect 6,000 four minutes after departure. That's enough for us to accomplish our, our uh, scenario here. I should add also that this video is strictly for entertainment purposes, not to be used for real 429 training. This is the X-Plane simulator with uh, Timber 61's 429 aircraft. A wonderful job, by the way. So. We're going to learn how to use the basic autopilot modes in this, and uh, let's just press on. First of all, by basic, I mean the airspeed hold, heading hold, vertical speed hold, and altitude hold. Those are the things we're going to do. I'm also going to sh use the nav hold, but we'll get into all the nav options in another video. So. A couple of things to keep in mind. First of all, on the 429, the minimum IFR airspeed is 75 knots. So, to be legal, we're going to accelerate down the runway to 75 or more knots and then start up. It's 300 overcast right now, so we're going to hit that overcast pretty quickly. So we want to be at or above 75 knots when we do that. Secondly, FAA requires that the attitude mode be engaged anytime you're flying in instrument condition. So once again, uh, we're going to we're going to accelerate, and as we lift up, we're going to engage the attitude mode. Some people like to engage it even before they take off, and then use the force trim push button to disengage temporarily. It's uncomfortable for me to make uh, to hover with my hand all the way on the collective. That's just because that's how my flight controls are set up. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take off without it and then engage attitude mode and immediately push the force trim release and continue the climb until I meet my targets. So my targets are going to be uh, airspeed of 100 knots and a vertical speed of 1,000 feet. I'm going to want to establish that on the climb and again our initial altitude is 2,000 feet. Now for some really important info. The altitude hold on this autopilot works differently than any of them I've ever done. This may be normal for a helicopter. I have done very little helicopter IFR work, but here's how it works in this bird. If you select an altitude and you're on your way up and you push altitude hold, it will not arm and then continue the climb and capture. What will happen is as soon as you push altitude hold, it grabs your current altitude and makes that the altitude to hold. So on our climb out, if we were to push altitude hold, the ship would level off until we got a chance to change the altitude back to 2000. Then it would start its climb again, but even then only after we increase the vertical speed. That'll cause a step in our climb. That's not what the air traffic control wants to see. They want to see a, a, a steady climb like that. So we're not going to engage the altitude hold until we reach 2,000 feet. But I'll show you a trick of how to do that intercept at 2,000 feet very nicely with just using the collective to control your vertical speed. This is a nice thing that um, you can do to do that. All right, so let's get the autopilot set up for this departure. First of all, we're cleared to the Gaviota Vortac <clears throat> and that's in number one nav. I'm going to take number two off of here just to keep things clean. So we have Gaviota selected as our station. For uh, situational awareness, that's this via Vortac right here. We're here, so we're going to take off, proceed runway heading, intercept that 127 radial inbound, which is 307. 
<coughs> then we're clear to Gaviota. This would be the type of clearance you'd get if you asked for IFR on top. They'd give you a clearance to some nearby place, and they'd know that you'd be sure to be on top by then. Uh, by the way, the tops of this typical California Strait is deck 3,500 feet today. All right. Now, the next thing we need to do is set our, um, uh, our indicated airspeed. Now, how to set the indicated airspeed bug for the autopilot? That is down here on the cyclic, I'm sorry, the collective hat switch. If you look at this hat switch, it can be pushed left and right and up and down. So to get the airspeed bug to change, you have to push it left and right. Think of it this way, up and down is for vertical up down speed. So that's how you can remember this. So we're gonna have to do a lot of pushing here. I have this mapped to my uh, cyclic, a button on my cyclic, but I'm going to use this for the demo. All right, so we're almost to 100 knots. There we are. All right, take a quick look. Yep, blue airspeed bug at 100 knots. Now we need to do the same thing for the vertical speed, which is currently at zero. Up and down, remember. There we are. All right, we have a thousand feet per minute programmed in. The next thing we have to do is set the heading bug. Remember, maintain runway heading. So to set the heading bug, you could use the dials. I am just going to, uh, it's harder for me to see this. You know, you can change it with this. But I have a thing on my stick that will synchronize the heading and that's much easier to do. So now we have the heading set. Okay. And let's dial this decision height down so we don't get bugged by that. All right, that turns off the decision height alert. Now, for the altitude, which is shown here, we need to press the altitude select button, ALTS, boom. At that point, this multifunction knob down here, which if I can get my X camera thing out of the way, if you push it once, see the white dot stepping along up here? The white dot indicates thousands, hundreds, tens, and units. So we're assigned 2,000, so we'll go two, thousand. All right. I don't know what, why this should be showing the, uh, the altitude. It's saying feet per minute. I think this is a little bug in 1.4 of the, uh, of the 429. Don't worry about it. This is the number you should be looking at anyway for the altitude select. All right, so now we have everything set up um, nav-wise and autopilot-wise. 100 knots, 1,000 feet a minute, runway heading. Ah, one more thing. We want to select the course selector to our radio that we're going to intercept. That is going to be one two seven and three zero seven. Three zero seven there's one two seven radial three zero seven inbound. And as it, you can see, we're heading towards our radial that we're going to intercept. So that would be kind of more or less this one right here. It's not that's not the one two seven radio, but it'll work. Right. So now we're set up. This bearing pointer is pointing towards Gaviota right now. So as you can see, we're going to be uh, navigating to pull that bearing needle around clockwise until it matches up with our course, at which time this thing will come into the middle and we can navigate to the vortex. 
So, let us start our thing here. All right. Everything looks good. All right, now things are going to happen a little faster. Try and pay attention, and we'll see what we can get out of this. Get my feet on the pedals right. All right, here we go. I've done better than that in the past. But that's all right. All right, a little higher maybe. And then all gauges in the green. No caution warning lights. Off we go. There's 60, 65, 70, 75. Now, I engage the at. 100. Push down on the uh, release button for the, and get my speed and my rate of climb, which is too high and my speed's too low. So we need to lower the nose just a hair and bring that speed up and the rate of climb down to maybe right about a little more, a little lower on the nose. Bring the speed up, there we go, right there's a magic number. All right, hold that attitude. Now, press the heading hold. That'll bring us back to the runway heading. The airspeed hold, that'll put us right a little over 100. And the vertical speed hold we're on our way up under autopilot control. I overshot the airspeed a little bit. I wandered Attitude. off the... Uh, now we're getting close to 2,000 feet. So I'm going to release the vertical speed right here. Boom. I am now in control of my vertical speed with the collective. I lower the collective. You can see it's down at 800 feet a minute. I'm going to nurse this up to 2,000 feet using the collective to control my rate of ascent, my vertical speed. I'm looking down at a keypad that I'm using to do my mode selection. So sorry about all that swinging around. All right, as we get close to that altitude we need to be at, I am going to now lower the collective right there and press altitude hold. Oh, I overshot it by 17 feet. Let me give you a closer look at the instruments again. Okay, now you see the altitude, heading, and airspeed are all on. We're at very close to our altitude. Just got an airspeed alert. And we are getting very close to our uh, radial. So I'm going to be ready on that. Let's see, where are we here? Yeah, there she comes. All right, so should be getting quite close. No, that's not true. I've got a, I've got a ways to go. Never mind. So sorry about that. Um, let's go. We're still in the clouds. We can take a look at that here. Instruments. Yes. I hope that made sense. Especially the part about using the collective to control your vertical speed by just notching off the, the vertical speed hold. It's now going to hold airspeed and hold heading. And as you move the collective, you're basically controlling your, ver your vertical speed. So as you approach your selected altitude, you can um, lower the collective 
and creep that vertical speed down. Here comes our needle. So, whoops, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted this. I have a multi multi switch on my uh, cyclic, and that that was the view. Put the hat switch on view. All right, so we're coming around to our course. Now we're going to need to climb to uh, 6,000 feet shortly. We'll just wait until we get on course. This is a tutorial. Um, I'm easing this around. Now, I can go ahead and engage nav mode right now. And to do that, click. It just changed up here. You can see the change to VOR instead of, oh, what the heck is this message now? All right, never mind. It changed to VOR. We're now going to track the VOR. And now the next thing we can do is do our altitude change. And I'm just going to do this without even looking outside. We don't need to change it outside. So time to go to 6,000 feet. Now what's going to happen? As soon as we dial up the 6,000 feet, three, four, five, six, let's get rid of that 17 here and get rid of this here. All right. Now, you can see up here the altitude came on white and the vertical speed is still, the, the, this is what we're holding, this is what we're going to do. We change this, so we need to change our vertical speed now. Look, look, it's back down here at zero. So we need to increase the vertical speed in order for us to start our climb to 6,000. And that's what we're going to do. Up here now, this feet per minute's not right. It is now, though. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's a thousand foot a minute climb. And you'll see the ship starting to climb. getting close to being on top. And we've captured our radio quite nicely. We're five miles still from the um, from the Vortac. 110 knots is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and just creep the airspeed on up to 110. Let it right along like that. All right. So as we climb, you can see this thing has changed back to 6,000 after we changed our vertical speed. Let me change the vertical speed down and up and you'll see what I mean. All right, I'm going to reduce the vertical speed a little bit by going click. There's 900 feet a minute. There's 1,000 feet a minute. All right, now watch. Count to 10. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, maybe fifteen. I don't know. This eventually will change back. Yeah, there it is, six thousand feet. So again, don't pay attention to this. This should just read feet right now. Are we still in IMC? Yes. I think I've set the tops at thirty-five or four or something like that, so I forget. So what's going to happen now that we already have altitude mode engaged and we're climbing to an altitude is as it approaches the 6,000 feet, it's going to level itself out. Ah, now we're getting close to Gaviota. So I don't want to overfly Gaviota in nav mode because it swings like crazy. So I'm going to switch us back to heading mode. Click. All right. That now reads heading. This is just good piloting practice. Overflying a VOR when you're coupled. Switch back to heading mode while you overfly the VOR. And um, I'm not sure. I've noticed this before. Why the heading tends to drift off in the direction of the needle. For what reason, I don't know. Anyway, all right, we're getting ready to cross that VOR now. As you can see, there it is. And I've crossed a little bit to the right. Whoa, there it goes. 
So we didn't get that big turn. And as you can see, I it's not going to um, do a, a go a left do the left right thing. So that's good too. All right. Once we get a, a mile or two after, you know, away from the Vortac, um, I'll go ahead and go back on nav mode. We're getting close. Again, um, since we are already in altitude hold, and we started up from altitude hold, it will uh, capture and track that 6,000 feet. Here we go. Ready? Altitude. Okay, there's our altitude alerter call. And I can probably switch back to nav mode now. We're a couple miles past it. Boom. Okay. VOR. And this changed to altitude almost at exactly the same time. It's now in capture mode. It's starting to bring down the vertical speed. And we should settle right on 6,000. Alright. Let's see where we are here. Ah, yes, we are on top. Looks like the clouds are higher than what I set them at, but oh well. So there you have it. That's pretty much what it looks like to use the autopilot for very basic operations. I hope this has been helpful to you. Again, thanks to Timber61 for the awesome Bell 429. And finally, again, this is strictly for entertainment purposes, not to be used for flight training on the 429. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching. Let's go outside for a minute and see what it looks like. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'm probably going to do another one of these on navigation modes, basic navigation modes, so stay tuned for that.